So I'd like to look at how to find the equation of a parabola by hand when it's got a k value, or when it has a scale factor attached to it. So we might remember that there's two formats that we generally use um, when talking about parabolas and transforms. And one is using the x-intercepts, this method here, when you actually know the x-intercepts. You can see them on the graph, so in this case we can see there's a negative 2 and a 4 crossing through the x-axis. And so that would be a formula that you'd have to remember or know, this highlighted in yellow. And the other method is using um, the vertex method. So this is when you know your vertex. And here you can see the vertex. It's been given to you here. And that one is going to be at 3, 4. So over 3, up 4 to get to that vertex. So when you're going to write an equation, the first thing you have to do is pick which formula to start with. And I'll go through both of these so you can see how they work out, but the first thing that we're going to do is look at the intercept method. So that's this one over here, and when you've got this generic formula, the k is a scale factor we're going to solve for. That tells us how fat or skinny the parabola is. But the a and the b these are just the x-intercepts off your graph. So x-intercept 1 and x-intercept 2. It doesn't matter which one you put in, in terms of order, you just have to make sure you watch out the signs. And one thing to watch for here is if I put a negative 2 in with the negative there, the negative and the negative will cancel become a positive. So it's important to kind of remember that if you see a positive in that formula, as we write it out, that goes to the left and a negative takes the intercept on the right. So let's see how that looks. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is substitute in both of the x-intercepts. So taking that generic equation, y is equal to k, x minus a minus 2 for the first x-intercept, and x minus 4 for the second intercept. So positive 4 with the minus there, and this one is minus with a negative 2, so this actually becomes x plus 2, x minus 4. So that's what I was saying, positive is actually a negative number on the graph, if that's why you want to think about it. So plus takes the intercept on the left, and the negative takes the intercept on the right. But if you just follow the formula, it'll work out. Just watch your signs. So once you've substituted it in, we can work through what we have to do here. And the next thing that you're going to do is actually pick a point on the graph that's not the x-intercept. So, or either of them. So since we've used both the x-intercepts, we really need to pick a point that is not an x-intercept, otherwise the equation that you'll solve will not be helpful for you. So if we look carefully on this graph, we should be able to spot one, and you want to be really careful to pick one that you can read exactly. So, vertex I don't know because I can't read that scale very well, but if I look here, that point seems to be right under the crosses on, the, on that grid there. So I'm going to read that point as 3 in the x direction, and negative 2 in the y. So that's point 3 comma negative 2. And remember, coordinates are always x comma y. So I'm going to substitute this point into the equation that I've got to here. So I'm going to replace the y with the negative 2. Negative 2 is equal to k, which I don't know, and x in this case is 3. So I replace the x with a 3, so 3 plus 2, and 3 minus 4. So again, I've substituted in my x-intercepts to get to here. Next thing is pick a point that's actually on the graph and plug it into the equation that you've got going. And you'll notice now you only have k left, so what we have to do is actually solve for this to figure out what k is going to be. So if I have negative 2 is equal to k, let's simplify what's in the brackets here. 3 plus 2 is 5, and 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So I have k is equal to 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. So that's negative 5k, you can write it out like that, negative 5 times k, is equal to negative 2. And dividing both sides by negative 5, I get the negatives cancelling here, 
that's 2 over 5 is equal to k. Or you could also write that out as 0 0.4 is equal to k, depending on what you do. And in terms of getting full credit for this, showing your algebra is great, but if you're not very strong with your algebra, it might be a good idea to plug it into solver and double check, but you need to make sure you've shown at least these steps here about your substitution before you get to your answer. So don't be afraid to use solver to help you get through that, so get you to the solution of k if you need the help. And don't forget your last step, actually write out the complete equation. So what we found is that the scale factor here is 0 0.4, k is equal to 0 0.4 or 2 fifths. So we need to actually write that back out again with our equation that we had here where we almost had it, but we just didn't know what k was. So now we're going to write that in. y is equal to 0 0.4 times x plus 2, bracket x minus 4. And now you're done. Always pays a little bit to just double check that things have made sense in your answer. I notice here my k is positive, and my parabola is positive. It's pointing up, which is good. I also notice that it's less than 1, and the parabola does appear to be somewhat fat, somewhat wide, so I'm guessing that's correct as well. Because remember, a k less than 1 makes it wider, and a k more than 1 will make it narrower. So the format for using the vertex method over here is much the same. We have to substitute into an equation and then solve through. So in this first example, we used both the x-intercepts. In this next example, we'll notice there's actually no x-intercepts available to us. There's only the vertex, which we can read as 3, 4. So that's the information we're actually going to use. So again, using our basic equation, y is equal to k bracket x minus a squared plus b, we're going to substitute in the values of the vertex, where this is the x value, or if you want to think left slash right value, and this is your up slash down shift for it. So positive here is up, negative is down, and again this one inside the brackets is kind of opposite where the positive is left and the negative is right. So looking at what we have, I have a x value here, I've shifted 3 to the right, so I need to have a minus, sorry, I need to have a minus 3 squared. And here I've gone up 4, so it's going to be plus 4. So again, those are the coordinates. If you want to think about that, that's a comma b, one way to look at that. And replacing a with 3 and b with 4. So now that we're to this point, similar to the last time around, we need to pick a point on the graph that's not the vertex. So again, if you use the vertex in your equation, you don't want to plug it back in again. You need to find a new point. So if I look here for a new point, again, you have to be really careful to find something exactly on the grid, otherwise it won't work out for you. We can pick this one here. The parabola is going through that, and it appears to be exactly on those grid lines. So that point there is over 2 and up 1, so that's 2, comma 1. And again, that's x, comma y. x first, then y. So I'm going to substitute that point 2, comma 1 into the formula I'm working through so far. So y becomes 1, k, x becomes 2 minus 3 squared plus 4. And now that I've substituted in the equation, I need to solve for k. So simplifying, 1 equals k times negative 1 squared plus 4. So negative 1 squared is just 1, and k times 1 is just k, so that's 1 is equal to k plus 4. And subtracting 4 from both sides gives me minus 3 is equal to k. Now, this doesn't make sense, so let's think about what's going on here. And why this doesn't make sense is, to me, immediately, seeing a negative 3, that tells me I should have an upside-down parabola. And I don't. I have a right-side-up parabola. So looking back through, let's figure out what went wrong. I think my algebra is okay, but let's just double-check this point. Over 2, and I said up 1, but I was measuring up 1 from 5 by accident. That should really, really be, what, 2, comma, 2, comma, 6. And this will make more sense. So that 1 should be a 6. 
six, six, six minus four, that should get me two. K equals two. This does make sense to me. So that's what I mean by checking for kind of the dummy mistakes that I said is, have you done something silly? And often if you just pay attention to the big picture, you'll catch it. So here I've got a positive k value of 2. That parabola does look kind of skinny, so I'm thinking more than 1 is probably okay. It's positive, which is an upright parabola, and so all that worked out. My last step here will then just be to write out the complete equation. So y is equal, k is equal to 2, x minus 3 squared plus 4. So again, the minus 3 plus 4 come from the fact that the parabola is to the right 3 and up 4. And the k, the 2 here, is telling us that the parabola is actually a bit skinnier. So there you go. On both those methods, just be careful to pay attention to what you're doing. And again, the first thing is that you have to pick which equation to use, whether to start with the intercept method or to start with the vertex method. And just to remind you guys, for those kind of dummy checks if you want, k less than 1 means you're going to have a wide parabola, something like that. k greater than 1 means you're going to have a narrow or skinny parabola. And positive k is upright, negative k is upside down. So give a go and see how it works.